there quilting friends it's carolina moore your favorite sewing and quilting youtuber and i'm here today to talk about my baby lock sasha co machine now i've done videos on the baby lock sasha co machine before but i thought it was time for an update i've had the machine for a couple of years now i'm still totally in love with this machine but there are so many people who still have not heard about the machine what it does and why you might want a baby lock sasha co so you ready let's get started To start with, the Baby Lock Sasha Co. is a machine that does big stitch sewing. So what that means is that it does a stitch space, stitch space, stitch space. Now you might have seen a similar stitch on some sewing machines where you'll see like a triple stitch and then a single stitch and then a triple stitch and then a single stitch. And from a distance, that triple stitch, single stitch, triple stitch, single stitch will look like the hand sewing look that you get of a stitch, a space, a stitch, a space. But when you look up close, you can see, okay, this was done by machine. This is on the top, a true stitch, space, stitch, space. So from the top, it genuinely does have the full look of hand sewing. But on the bottom, it has what looks like regular sewing machine stitches. So I'll show you what that looks like. I have this quilt that I'm working on quilting with Big Stitch Sashiko. And you can see right here on this seam, I have my stitch space, stitch space. And you can see that looks like regular hand quilting with a true stitch space stitch space right in there and here you can see it on dark fabric to see if you can see that stitch space stitch space better and now when i flip this over to the back you'll see my lines just look like regular sewing machine stitching So you get this full Sasha Co look um, with the Baby Lock Sasha Co machine without the time of actually having hand stitched or hand quilted all of this. It's great for decorative stitches on garments. It's great for a hand quilted look on quilts. It's great for so many things. Now the thing that the Sasha Co machine is not is it is not a machine used for piecing. So when you want to take your pieces of fabric and put them together and stitch that seam to be able to make and piece your quilt top, this is not the machine for that. You want to use your regular sewing machine for that. And then this just for your decorative stitches. Now there's some people when they hear that, that they say, well, I mean, I don't want a machine that only does one thing. Um, and on the one hand, sure, I understand that. But on the other hand, most of my machines really do one <laughs> thing, right? Um, most of my other machines usually just do straight stitching. That's all I ever do with them. I usually just piece with them. Um, the bigger ones, sometimes I'll do free motion quilting with them. Um, but I really, to me, um, buying a machine that does one thing, I'm usually buying a machine to do one thing. And if it does some other things, cool. But I'm looking at it for the one thing that it does. So the Baby Lock Sasha, Sasha Co machine, it does one thing. That one thing is super cool and it does that thing really, really well. So let's talk about how it does that thing because it is so fun to watch and I'm going to actually do some more quilting on this quilt so you can see how that works. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at the top of this machine. And here's my top of the machine and it looks a lot like you would expect a normal machine. It's got a spindle here for holding my thread um, and some thread guides for guiding it through um, and then over here a bobbin winder and so we're gonna go ahead and wind our bobbin on this bobbin winder and this works just like it would with a regular machine I'm gonna start by bringing it over here the Sashiko has this little piece right here which is actually tension discs and that helps with winding the even tension on this bobbin I'm going to flip that over and then with a press of the presser foot, it'll start. Now I can let go of the presser foot at this point and it'll keep going. So I don't need to keep my foot down on the presser foot and it's going to keep going until this bobbin is full. And then it's going to push away to stop the winding of the bobbin so that it doesn't overwind, which is super handy. We don't want our bobbin to be overwound. Um, 
like it's running through here. Perfect, exactly what we want. Now you'll notice that there are no thread guides here on the front of the machine, and that is by design because this top thread is never going to come down into this machine this way. We are only filling up our bobbin. Now our bobbin's full, so I can take this off and I can go ahead and cut this thread. And this thread can all stay on here if I want it to. Um, I'm just going to be using the bobbin. Now, I already have a full bobbin in here right now, so I'm going to do some quilting, but rest assured, I'm going to show you how this bobbin goes into the machine later on in the video. And you're gonna, <laughs> um, it's the coolest bobbin you've ever seen. So you definitely wanna stick around for that. All right, so let's look at actually stitching with this machine. The best way to describe stitching with this machine is that we are, it's almost like using a walking foot. You're just doing straight stitching. Now, does that mean that you can't go around a curve? Well, of course you can go around a curve because a walking foot, you can like walk yourself around a curve. It means that you can't do free motion. So like doing swirls like this um, wouldn't be possible unless you wanted to spin your whole quilt around underneath the um, Sashiko machine. And I, that feels like it'd be a lot of bulk to push underneath here. So usually I do stitching, like stitch a quarter inch away from the ditch. Um, and like echo quilting with the Sashiko machine. Okay, so I've lifted my presser foot up and I'm going to take this quilt that I'm working on and I'm going to start in a middle-ish seam. When, when you're quilting, you always wanna start in the middle and work your way out. It is a best practice because if you work start on the outside and work your way in you could end up with bubbles and puckers this way you're easing any extra fabric to the outside when you start in the middle and go out so i'm going to take the extra bulk of my quilt and tuck it underneath here. And this with any machine is the trickiest part of quilting is what to do with all this extra quilt because gravity is really your worst enemy when quilting. All the gravity of all of it pulling down is working against the feed dogs on your machine. So whatever you can do to bring the quilt up, I'm actually using my tummy right here and pushing it against the edge of the table, which is holding a lot of this quilt in place and I'm creating a little nest for myself here around the foot of the machine. And so I've got this little nest and you can barely see inside there. And now I'm going to go ahead and start quilting. Now for this design, I've chosen on both these levers to have the longest stitch length and the longest stitch space. These are the only levers or the really things that you can change on this machine in terms of the look of your sewing is that you can do, like I am here, a really long stitch and a really long space. If you want something that looks a little more traditional hand quilted, you might shorten your stitch length a little bit and shorten your stitch space a little bit more because I find that traditional hand quilting is a shorter stitch length and then less space. So the space is usually smaller than the stitch. Um, but you can play around with it and figure out what stitch length and stitch space you want. Um, you can also do different weights of thread, which will give you different looks. I'm just using a traditional thread that I would use for piecing, but different threads will give you different looks. Um, I love using a 12 weight thread. I've done that really often. Um, and it gives you a nice, really bold look. I didn't want the quilting on this to be overwhelming. So for this one, um, I just went with a regular piecing thread. Um, does it say on there? I think it's like a 40 weight, maybe. Like a, maybe a, probably a 50 weight thread. So just standard what you would use for piecing. But because when it's doing that stitch space, stitch space, it's actually creating a loop. So you're going to get a double thickness of the thread on top. Um, and so with the 12 weight, you get a really thick double thickness of thread. And with this uh, 40 weight, 50 weight, you just get a nice bold stitch. All right, <laughs> my thread here, I don't know if you can see, has gotten caught by the quilt. So I'm just gonna wrap this up out of the way. 
And then I usually do leave my thread here on the spindle just so that if I run out of bobbin that I have it right there where I need it. Um, if I tuck it away, put it on my table somewhere, then when I need another bobbin, I can't always find it or I can't remember which color I chose. So keeping it right here lets me know, okay, this is the color that I'm using for this project and I've got it handy. So it's got a spot. So we're just gonna keep going all the way to the end of the seam. And you can hear it just chugging along. And I'm just using the edge of my presser foot up against the edge of that seam so that my stitch is going to be just a quarter inch away from the seam. And that gives me that echo quilting or that echo stitch. Okay, now that I'm at the end of a seam, this part is super, super important. And that is that I'm going to lift up my presser foot and pull the thread away. And then over on this side over here, and you can't really see it, I'll show you at another angle, is the spot to pull. Oh. And that'll cut the thread, but it'll also pinch it right there. So when you cut the thread and pinch it right there, that gives the tension because we just have one thread. So we just have one thread going through here and that one thread is creating a loop and then getting caught and then creating a loop and then getting caught. And as it's doing that, it needs tension to hold it in place. It doesn't have a, a top thread and a bottom thread to pull against each other to give that tension. So we want to tuck our thread in there, it pinches it and it also cuts off the end. So there we go. I just did, if I can find my, my row of stitches. So I just did this row of stitching right here. And then for this quilt, I would do another row of stitches on the other side, a quarter inch away from the other side. Um, because these blocks on this quilt are so big, just stitching on the, the sashing seams is not going to be enough. I actually want to quilt around these hearts. And I did that on one of these hearts already. So I'm going to show you that. Let's see, where is my, here we go. This is the one that I did already on this double heart. And so I just went around, you can see right here around the edge. And I was even able to easily curve around this top edge here. And then I may want to do and inside this heart stitching and maybe an inside this heart stitching, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look at the batting. So to know um, how far apart your quilting needs to be, it'll say on your batting. If you can be six inches apart or eight inches apart or 10 inches apart on your quilting. Um, so you wanna have your quilting a certain like closeness. I could also go in here with some regular free motion quilting and do some free motion quilting in here um, to kind of supplement the stitching that I'm doing with the Sasha, Sasha Co machine. So there's lots of ways that you can do this. So that is how the Sasha Co machine works. It is super cool. And um, now I'm going to show you what it looks like to swap out that bobbin. The bobbin for the Baby Lock Sash goes accessed here on the side. And the way that that's done is that you want to start by pushing the little button on the front until you see the green light. And once you see the green light, that's your green light to open up the bobbin housing. You can see this is not a lot different than most forward facing bobbins, like front loading bobbins. Um, once we take it out, you will see that it's different, but right now it really doesn't look that different. And we're going to pull it out the exact same way that we normally would, which is, there's a little handle right here. So right here, that little handle, you're gonna lift that up and pull the bobbin out. So this is the bobbin and you can, or the bobbin housing, and you can see it's got this little mohawk on top let me bring that a little closer. There you go. It's got this little mohawk on top and it's got this little um, kind of tail on the bottom. Um, and those are important parts of the Sashko machine. I could not tell you exactly what they do. I just know that they're there and they're important and we are going to use them as we put the bobbin in. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the bobbin out. 
and show you how to thread the bobbin. Now, if you ever need instructions on how to thread the bobbin, inside there are instructions on how to thread the bobbin. Those are just inside the housing. And this shows you have your little mohawk on top and your little hands on the bottom. Let's go ahead and thread our bobbin the way we normally would with any machine. You pop your bobbin in so that it is winding in a clockwise direction. Then you bring that thread in the notch and pull it up. So it's coming up in the counterclockwise direction. And when you hold it like this, it should just dangle from that thread. That's how you know you've done it right. Now this Sashko machine has a needle, but it doesn't have a needle that we're actually going to thread. So the one thing that we thread is we actually thread our bobbin by just bringing the thread through those two little holes in that little tail. Now we're all threaded, so I'm just gonna flip this over. I'm gonna hang on to this thread in a second, and we're going to tuck this into the bobbin housing. Now you can see down here, there's a little spot for those two little hands to click in, the little tail. There we go, snapped in place. And now I have this thread. I'm just gonna hang on to this thread for a second. And when I bring my needle down, out is going to come this little arm right here. I'm going to bring the thread up and into that arm. And now it's threaded there. Now we're going to bring the thread up. And once the thread is brought up, I can use, in this case, I'm using that purple thing. Just pull the thread up. Now that my thread is brought up to the top, I can close the machine. And I'm going to tuck the thread in that little pincher and clip it off. So now I'm ready to sew. I wanna go really slow here and show you what's going on with the machine. So I'm gonna press, the needle goes down and it comes up. And I don't know if you caught that loop. So that was the stitch. Here it's the space and it made another stitch. So you'll see this hook right here is actually catching a loop of thread. What's happening is this needle is coming down and there's two parts to this needle. It's pinching the thread underneath, bringing it up to go on this hook, and then bringing it back down. Ready? So what that looks like full speed as we're sewing is like this. And that is so cool because it's unlike what any other machine does. So I have some links for you down in the description so you can get more information on the Baby Lock Sashko machine. If you want to learn more, you can also go to your local Baby Lock dealer and ask them about the Baby Lock Sashiko. They may have one in stock that you can actually try out and see how cool it looks and that you can make these hand quilting looking stitches without actually doing all the work <laughs> of hand quilting. Honestly, I get so many compliments on my quilts when people go, oh my gosh, you hand quilted that? And I always tell them, no, no, I didn't. I have a machine that does all that work for me and it makes it so much faster yet look so, so great. So I'm so thankful for the Baby Lock Sashiko machine. It's making me look good all the time. Um, if you have any questions, you can also throw those down in the comments and I'll answer whatever questions I can. I'm definitely not an expert in all things Baby Lock, but I love my Baby Lock and uh, we'll see if we can get you some answers to whatever questions that you have. Make sure you've given this video a thumbs up to let people know that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave those down below. And friends, I will see you right here real soon. Bye for now.